ready for our third act? Yeah. Okay, I worked with this guy up in London just recently and it's great to get him down here in Brighton. So please put your hands together, welcome to the stage, brilliant Jack Barry! Yeah. full time, so you guys get to decide whether or not it was a terrible fucking idea. Um, I, uh, I wanted to talk about what my old job was before I quit, but I've been told for legal reasons I'm not supposed to tell you exactly what company I work for, but it's completely true. I used to do all the Facebook and Twitter for quite a well-known fast food chain. Yeah. I won't say the name, but they're very well known for making fried chicken, okay? And they're based in Kentucky. <laughs> if I don't say the name, then legally I'm fine. But genuinely, if anyone in the UK or Ireland wrote on their Facebook page or tweeted them, then I was the guy who replied. It's weird, because mostly it would be like people being like, oh, I love you, and I had to write back and be like, oh, I love you too, baby. Oh, Merry Christmas, love the Colonel. <laughs> That's how I made the most. And it was weird, because basically it meant I got to speak to all the idiots from all over the UK and Ireland about fried chicken. And uh, I'll give you an example. Um, one guy tweeted, and he was very annoyed, he wanted to complain, he said, uh, Dear KFC, I've, um... Wait, no, sorry, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired. Um, does anyone here work with KFC? Okay, it, was, it was KFC, I worked for KFC. <laughs> I don't know if anyone guessed it from my little riddle earlier on. <laughs> well, I'll just keep that between ourselves, shall we? Okay. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> this guy, fuck it's out now, this guy tweeted and he said, uh, he said, Dear KFC, I've just been into one of your restaurants for your nine piece bucket of chicken, and I've got it home and you've only given me eight pieces. And then with that, he tweeted a photograph of nine pieces of chicken. <laughs> I might just ride right back and be like, oh, I think I killed Nan, baby. Uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, this other woman, I mean, fuck it, I've said it now, this ain't an advert for KFC, so I'm just gonna go all out. This one woman, she tweeted and she said, um, I've just been to the Camden KFC tonight and the chips tasted of actual poo. And then she said, I know KFC isn't the nicest restaurant in the world, but for me, poopy chips are a step too far. And then she said, I hope this gets looked into, RSVP. She meant to say ASAP, but she got her acronyms mixed up. So it was like she was inviting me to a pie. <laughs> Let me know if you can make the booby chips pie. I was like, I'll be there. Love a booby chips pie. <laughs> I, can't, I can't have a go though. I mean, I'm an idiot as well, as you've just seen. <laughs> I mean, fuck it, like, I, I'll, uh, I'll give you an example of my idiots. Does anyone here work in like healthcare or medicine or anything like that? No. Okay, good. Well, you'd expect it in a big room, wouldn't you? But no, fuck it. Last night, I, uh... No, fine. Last night, I uh, said, does anyone here work in healthcare? And this guy really confidently put up his hand and was like, yeah, dental hygienist. And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> That's like the fringes of healthcare, isn't it? So, so I've got to get this plaque off or he's going to die. <laughs> Pass me my floss, I'm going to save him. Um, <laughs> No, the reason I ask about healthcare is because I, I read an article recently about, um, I don't know if any, anyone else has seen this, about sniffer dogs. That apparently now they've got sniffer dogs with such an amazing sense of smell, they can smell if a person's got cancer. Yeah, a few people nodding, yeah, apparently this is a new thing, which is amazing. But when I read that, my first thought was, oh, that must be the most depressing dog ever to take on a walk with you. <laughs> Oh, your dog really seems to like me. I am so sorry. <laughs> I've got some terrible news. <laughs> the thing is, if you train a dog to smell if someone's got cancer, then if it does its job, you're supposed to reward the dog. <laughs> Except for, oh, I'm really sorry, it's cancer. Find a specialist. <laughs> it was a good boy then. <laughs> you want a treat? <laughs> you just ruined his day, haven't we? Yeah. And again, this is how stupid I am. A couple of days ago, I wanted to talk about a cancer dog on stage. 
That's his name. And, uh, and I, I got halfway through the setup to that bit, and I noticed there was a girl in the second row who started really excitedly nudging her boyfriend. I went, ooh! And the first thought in my stupid brain was, oh, he must have cancer. <laughs> like, oh, that's what you've got. <laughs> You'll like this comedy for you. <laughs> like your favourite thing. <laughs> and then, it wasn't, obviously. So I, I said to her, oh, why, are you, why are you excitedly nudging your boyfriend like that? And she said, we've just read an article about dogs that can smell if you've got an STD. <laughs> like, what a time to be alive. <laughs> It really troubled me on the way home because I was like, I don't know what the use of a dog that can smell an STD would be. <laughs> the only thing I could come up with would be if you're out night clubbing. <laughs> and you're just getting off with someone and you go, Lassie? And Lassie's like, mm mm mm. <laughs> Back away, sir or madam. I'm going to take my sweet lips elsewhere, I think. <laughs> the dog says no. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll give you another example of how stupid I am. I'll be honest, this might split the room a little bit, but you guys were all laughing at cancer dogs, so I think hopefully we're fine. <laughs> it's ever so slightly dicey. So I just found out... <laughs> I'm gonna say it. So you know how some people uh, commit suicide by putting their head in the oven? Stay with me, guys. <laughs> Like, Sylvia Plath did it. I think it was like mostly like a 1950s way to kill yourself. Yeah, like I only found out embarrassingly recently the way you would do that is you turn on the gas and then you put your head in and you suffocate to death on the gas. Like, until the right by age 26, I thought you'd just turn on the oven as normal and then you get in and cook to yourself. <laughs> just like gently roasted yourself to death. And I always used to think, imagine the tenacity that must take. Be like, uh, oh, it's getting pretty hot. <laughs> Oh, something smells really good. It's me. Suicide's still on. I don't get how delicious I smell. I'm glad I said it. We found the level, haven't we? Valentine's Day suicide jokes. A OK, and Brian. I keep, I keep just sort of uh, making things worse for myself by being a fucking idiot. I, uh, I mean. I mean, yeah, you guys are nice, I'm going to say this. A few nights ago, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lower the tone a bit. I mean, fuck it, I've spoken about suicide, so I think we're fine. I, uh, I was on the bus on the way home after a gig a few nights ago, and basically... Is that, is that you? I don't know. Let's say it was the 12, guys. I was having a good old number 12. Basically, halfway through this bus journey, I realised I was a little bit gassy. Okay, I'm sorry, and I basically, I really needed to fart. And I thought, it's going to be a loud fart, I can feel it, but I've just got to do it, and then I can just avoid eye contact with everyone else on the 12 for the rest of the journey, and we'll be fine. So I did the fart, and there was no sound. I was like, great, you know, I've got more. <laughs> so I was just like liberally farting away, thinking this is great, can't believe none of this is making any sound at all. And then I realised the only reason I couldn't hear anything was because I had my headphones in. <laughs> And everyone else on the bus was looking at me like I was some kind of madman. <laughs> it looked like I was dancing and jamming out to the sound of my own farts. <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking love this one. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just so dumb. And I, I, and I, and I also, just, I, I keep sort of taking a look at myself and you're like, oh, come on. Like, did it, like, when you were younger, did you think that as you got older, you would, like, get wiser and you would grow more morals? And then, and then as you got older, you realised it's the complete opposite way around. And everything's gone. Like, when I was a kid, I used to be really anti-drugs. I was like, drugs are bad, drugs are for losers, never going to do any drugs. And now I'm 27, I think, heroin is too far. <laughs> like, that's for the big boys. I'm never, like, I'll leave that to them. Anything else, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, and it, this is another story. And it, I, I mean, this story just kind of made me look like a piece of shit, so I'm, I'm really sorry. But when I was a teenager and I was an idiot, one night I went to a, a party at my friend's house and I drove there and I thought I was staying over, so I had a couple of beers. And then I, had to, I found out I couldn't stay over and I had to drive home. I was like, shit, had a couple, yeah, exactly. Never drink, drive, that's for the bad boys. But I was like, I need to get home. 
So in my stupid teenage brain, I thought, I know, I'll have a spliff and it'll take the edge off. <laughs> but you know what? It bloody works a treat. <laughs> Basically, a couple of hours later, I was driving down the dual carriageway on my way home and I was like, I am going way too fast. Like, I need to keep an eye out for the police. Like, I'm going to break the sound barrier. I'm going so fast. Like, it's ridiculous. And I looked at the speedo. I was doing 12 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm going to get pulled over but for another reason. So I put the foot down to 20 and I was like, the skin is going to melt off my face. I'm going too fast. So yeah. I mean, the moral of my set, I guess, is don't drink and drive. But if you are going to, get a spliff down. You know, so. Do it on the number 12. It would probably help. Yeah. We all have a good Christmas and New Year and everything? Yeah. I had a weird Christmas this year. I was actually in China for Christmas. And... Uh, Whoop for China, absolutely, I do. And uh, China's weird because it's like, they're, they're not a traditional Christian country, so they don't usually, uh, you know, celebrate Christmas. But they're sort of trying to get into it now. And uh, so one day, day when I was in the market there, I found my favourite ever Christmas decoration. It was a little figurine of Santa Claus, but he had been nailed to a cross. <laughs> so they so nearly got it right, there's a minor mistranslation there. It's really fucked everyone's childers. I just wanted to know what the story was behind that. It's like this guy came to earth, died for our sins, he comes back every year to give us presents. He doesn't hold a grudge. Um, he does it on his birthday too. He's a generous, generous guy. Um, I'll, leave you the, I mean, I'll, I'll leave you this. Uh, uh, we all drinking tonight, I'm guessing? Yeah. Many of us out having a big one, yeah? You're definitely drinking. Those of you who like drinking, um, do you like drinking games? Yes. Have any of you ever heard of a game called Cock or Ball? Yes. Yeah? Those of you who haven't heard of it, it's, uh, it's quite a highbrow game. Um, basically, the idea of it is, is that a man undoes his fly and he takes out a nondescript piece of flesh. And everyone else has to guess whether it's cock or whether it's ball. Yeah? So anyone can play it, but only really a man can like, set the questions. <laughs> like the quiz master. <laughs> And basically, again, like when I was a teenager a few years ago, I was um, me and some friends. We were going on a night out one night. We were all playing cock or ball because it's hilarious, obviously. <laughs> and we all went to the nightclub and we were all dancing away, having a nice time. And my friend forgot where we were and came up to me in the middle of the dance floor and went, "Jack, cock or ball," and did it. And so instantly, a bouncer appeared from nowhere and starts dragging him out of the club. So we're all going, "Why, why, why did you him out of the club?" Like, Explain this. He's been a gentleman since we got here. And uh, the bouncer turned around and went, he got his cock out on the dance floor. You can't do that. Straight away, my friend turned around and went, no, it was ball. <laughs> you got to respect the game, basically. So, uh, so yeah, guys, you've been loving. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I'll be back Hey, what a great section. Uh, so we got an interval now before back with our final act. Can we hear it one more time, please? For two, three acts, we saw Amy Havaska, uh, Jake Howie, and Jack Barry. <laughs>